Well, the borders are finally open again and we've flown here to the Philippines. We're doing our quarantine at the Fairmont Hotel. I thought I'd play around with the tessellation pattern that we've been using for the origami magic ball. You may recall that the pattern consists of a number of stacked zigzag lines. In the inner rows, the zigzags are opposite each other, but in the outer rows, the zigzags are lined up with each other. The inner rows form crosses and diamonds, whereas the outer rows form something like arrows. What I tried to do was line up the zigzags for the whole page. Because I was also folding the horizontals, I ended up with something that wasn't flat. Found out later how to do this herringbone tessellation. See how the zigzags are aligned and alternate mountain and valley fold. And also how there are no horizontals. Anyway, I decided to go with it and found that I could make this tube. The zigzags are also aligned, but there's a horizontal every third half square. And there's two valley fold zigzags to every one horizontal zigzag. And anyway, I'd been watching Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings on the plane on the way over, so it's kind of appropriate. Let's get started. Fold into eight horizontals. The ring does a complete circle in six folds. So to add one for the overlap, we need seven horizontals. Take one of the horizontals off. Now fold a diagonal against each of the horizontals. Now fold the diagonals the other way to complete the crosses. Use the intersections to fold the first vertical. Complete the diagonals against this line, one from each end. Now fold the second vertical. Complete the diagonals from either end.
fold the third vertical. Complete the diagonals. Finally, complete the fourth vertical. Trim it off, leaving a four by seven piece. Now put in the half square verticals. Because the horizontals for every one and a half squares, we need to put in the half square horizontals as well. Now fill in the half square diagonals, first folding each corner in. Now add one or two folds from each corner to complete the middle. So here we have the fully creased pattern which we've been using to make the origami magic ball. We're going to start as we did with the magic ball. Concertina the verticals. Where it meets the first row, change a mountain fold into a valley fold and vice versa. Let the half diagonal allow the two sides to sink together. Keep going across the page. Mm -hmm. 
reverse fold the tips. Now reverse the valley fold to become a mountain fold. But instead of allowing the diagonal to reverse, keep the diagonal aligned to form the arrow. These diagonals will be mountain folded. Keep your eye on the zigzag pattern to guide you as you move across the page. Collapse it together. Notice there's no horizontal fold here. See the folds are causing the paper to bend. Now we're back to a repeating pattern. Reverse the verticals again. Keep the diagonals aligned. And fold the horizontal one and a half squares down from the previous horizontal. The diagonal naturally sinks into a value fold. Now that you're getting the hang of this, we just need to repeat the pattern down the rest of the page. Just keep the diagonals aligned and the rest should just follow.
the end will have curled back to the beginning so just pull it off to the side so you have space Reverse fold the tips keeping the diagonals aligned. So you can wear this ring as a spiral but if they're going to be magic fighting rings they'd better be strong so we're just going to lock the two ends together. We don't need to do an interlocking fold just overlap it and redo the creases. This part was a little fiddly so I fixed it up off camera. See, once it's refolded, this join is very strong. It's a little bit small to fit at the bottom of the fingers. So you sort of have to wear them as fingertip cuffs. Now all you need to do is make another 9. You can experiment with using less verticals to make the rings a bit thinner.